Having risen from the ashes of the great quake and fire of 1906, San Francisco was ready to invite the world to a party. To celebrate the opening of the Panama Canal and the rebuilding of the city, San Francisco played host to the Panama Pacific International Exposition of 1915. Numerous Beaux-Arts structures celebrating European tradition were built to establish San Francisco as a world-class city. At the heart of the exposition was Festival Hall, a large dome-shaped auditorium seating 4,000, honoring the best in international musical talent. At the focal point of the hall was a brand new pipe organ showcasing the latest advances in pipe organ technology. 31 American organ builders vied for the honor of constructing what would be at the time the world's seventh largest musical instrument. The Austin Organ Company of Hartford, Connecticut was selected because of its innovative design and expertise. The company would go on to build world-renowned pipe organs for the legendary Bohemian Grove, Balboa Park, San Diego, City Hall, Portland, Maine, and civic auditoriums in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and others. A lavish nine-month program of musical entertainment commenced. In addition to orchestral programs featuring the organ, daily recitals were given by some 60 of the nation's leading organists. But none was more legendary than world-famous Edwin H. Lemaire. A celebrity figure of the 20th century, Lemaire was also the highest paid organist in the world. Lemaire's first recital was heard by only 400, a mere 10% of Festival Hall's capacity. Attendance, however, soared once word spread that the greatest living organist was performing. Soon, concerts were sold out affairs, Nearly every day, Lemaire played at noon and again at 8.30 in the evening, each performance with a different repertoire. At every concert, Lemaire improvised on themes sent up by the audience. His concerts became so popular that fair officials approved the expansion of seating in Festival Hall. And by closing day, 18.5 million people had come to the fair and Lemaire had played 121 concerts to almost 150,000 people. Unlike most world fairs, the Panama Pacific International Exposition closed with profits. The exposition company decided to donate these unexpected funds along with the organ to the city of San Francisco. Built in anticipation of receiving the exposition organ, San Francisco's Civic Auditorium would now have as its focal point the exposition organ. Like other municipal instruments of the time, the exposition organ would be the musical foundation of numerous civic events, performances, concerts, and conventions, as well as supporting the opera, choral groups, and the symphony. In a plaque mounted on the organ in its new home, the Exposition Committee dedicated the instrument in hopes that its use for wholesome and uplifting purposes will carry forward, for the benefit of all, the spirit that animated the Exposition. Lemaire had become so popular with San Franciscans that city supervisors invited him to leave his native England to become the city's first municipal organist. The contract gave him freedom to modify the instrument to reflect his concept of the perfect concert organ. My father loved San Francisco. He always felt that the organ in San Francisco was the best. It was his favorite and it was his love. He would be absolutely thrilled to think that it was again being played and people were enjoying it. Lemaire's exposition organ launched a movement among municipalities throughout the United States to commission pipe organs for civic auditoriums and bring great musical works to their communities. Edwin H. Lemaire was a 
sensation at the fair. In San Francisco, nobody had ever dreamed that organ playing like this was possible. His remarkable facility at the organ caught not just the ears of the critics and other organists, but also the paying public. And you have to remember that the people who came to organ recitals, and there were thousands of them, were common people. They were the people who couldn't dream of affording the tickets for the symphony orchestra. Le Maire brought music to the masses. For over six decades, the organ would remain a musical focal point of San Francisco. Historically significant concerts by world-famous organists and composers, including Marcel Dupré, Camille Sanson, and Virgil Fox would, over time, be featured on the historic exposition organ. San Francisco's Schoenstein Organ Company, the original installers of the exposition organ, served as curators for the instrument. Five generations of Schoensteins would maintain the instrument for over 75 years, assuring that Le Maire's legacy would be protected for future generations. In 1989, the Loma Prieta earthquake caused plaster to fall on the exposition organ, destroying some exposed pipes and damaging others. Four feet of plaster and debris cover the top of the huge pipe chambers, necessitating removal and restoration of the organ. The extent of the damage required that the instrument be returned to the Austin Organ Factory in Hartford, Connecticut. 75 years after the great exposition organ was born, almost all of the 40-ton instrument was loaded into three tractor trailers and moved nearly 3,000 miles back to its place of birth. Austin Organs was naturally excited to undertake the restoration of this important legacy from their past. In 1991, restoration work began in Hartford. Well, the organ arrived. It took over. Every bit of space we had was consumed with this organ. We had to come up with some decisions on just exactly what we were going to do to the organ in addition to repairing the earthquake damage. Every pipe had to be properly cleaned. The reeds had to be disassembled and literally revoiced. But other certain things would need to be done because of the dirt that was created by the falling plaster. Nine months after restoration work began, a cease work directive was sent by San Francisco to Austin Organs. The organ was to be returned to storage in San Francisco with an uncertain future. The order was a bitter blow for the Hartford staff whose enthusiasm for the project was high. This instrument, uh, 40 tons worth of instrument, which had consumed our 50 people, for so long suddenly was pulled directly out from under us. And we didn't quite know what to do with it because there were still components of it that were absolutely literally in pieces. And we were wondering, do we buy little baggies and put all these little parts in the baggies and put them in the truck? Or what is it that we do with this instrument now? Our friends in the American Guild of Organists out in San Francisco uh, were up in arms, of course, immediately over this because they knew that the fate of the instrument would be death if it were not at least put back into reinstallable condition in some form before it left our factory and they immediately got over to City Hall and started making a lot of noise. It is the exposition organ, some 40 tons of pipes and pedals, consoles and wind chests. In all, there are nearly 7,000 pipes in this organ. Everything you see around me is part of it. To build it today would cost between five and six million dollars, and yet here it sits, just waiting. In 1994, the largely restored exposition organ was received by San Francisco and placed in storage in Brooks Hall, where it has remained ever since. A grassroots movement has begun, consisting of volunteers from citizens groups, the American Guild of Organists, college students, hobbyists, and historians, all rallying around the instrument in hopes of having this last remaining vestige from the Panama Pacific International Exposition return to the Civic Auditorium in time for the 100th anniversary of that World's Fair.
Numerous cities around the country have recognized the cultural value of their municipal organs and have successfully commissioned restorations. As a service to their communities, municipal organs have once again resumed local prominence as a cultural asset. The Spreckles organ is a wonderful symphonic concert organ, as indeed is the exposition organ in San Francisco. We often think of that as our big sister, actually, because they're very similar in the concept of the instrument. Our Sunday concerts, we have uh, quite a wide-ranging attendance, of course, depending on the weather, but sometimes this seating area of over 2,400 out here is nearly filled. Uh, for our Monday evening International Organ Festival, it's generally filled all the time. And sometimes for a particularly popular thing, people are just standing all over the place, two, three thousand people. Unmoved since its restoration in 1994, the exposition organ remains undamaged and ready for its return to the Civic Auditorium. Carefully crated and cradled when returned from the Austin Organ Factory, the city has guarded its safety, preserving costly restoration work. The question now is, will the city do as other world-class cities have done around the country and recognize the cultural and municipal value of its instrument? Or will the city of San Francisco let this last remaining vestige from the Panama Pacific International Exposition of 1915 linger and eventually deteriorate from unnatural positions and unexpected fires, water leaks, and vandalism? Consideration has recently been given to responsible alternatives for the instrument. However, none of these alternatives have withstood the test of cost-benefit analysis that returning the organ to the Bill Graham Civic Auditorium holds. Not only is this the historically appropriate location, but it is the acoustic environment for which Lemaire's vision was designed. It also allows the city of San Francisco to close the book on the tragedy and challenge of the Loma Prieta earthquake and will put right the FEMA funds which were designated specifically for the exposition organ.